Oh, I'm loving this. It looks fun but oh. dangerous. No, no, it's lovely. Yeah. yeah. You'll have to try one out at the bike shop up there. Oh, it's a bit shadowy. That's it, perfect. Stay there. Good afternoon and welcome to the Velo Ads YouTube channel. We are now outside Bike Fix. Um, today is a day of recumbent two wheelers. So I'm over at my mate Stuart's uh, shop, the only independent uh, recumbent bike shop in central London. So today we're, the plan is to test ride uh, the HP Velotechnic Grasshopper, the HP Velotechnic Street Machine. Um, the Mike Burroughs extreme, extremely low mole rat, which is going to be tricky because the chain runs uh, beside the front wheel, so it has a restricted turning circle. Basically, it's for um, race tracks and whatnot, not really for the roads of London. But we'll see how we go with that one. Let's go and get a bike out of the shop. So it looks like it's going to be the street machine first. And we've got Stuart here, he's slightly worried about the cold outside, but he's wrapped up and totally insulated. A street machine GTE. Over to you, Stuart. Uh, so I wanted to explain the difference between the three HP Velotechnic models. Uh, starting with the street machine, which is their original, which is the original HP Velotechnic bike. This one has got a relatively high seat. And, and, and lowish pedals. You can see that when you're sitting on it, you're upright and uh, you know your feet can reach the ground easily. And when you're pedaling, you've got a kind of nice, easy riding position. And especially with the underseat steering, you've got kind of relaxed shoulders. The whole thing feels very comfortable, very easy. Uh, I can show you some details on the bike, but they're basically all the same. And I think the main thing you want to be, you want to know about, is the lovely seat which is quite unusual. It's a sandwich with foam inside and some sort of composite on the outside. So you get quite a thick, uh, nice shape and very structurally sound, nice and strong. It also flexes a bit in the middle so that when you put it on the bike, you can adjust it. So all three, all three bikes have that seat. It's got uh, three quick release levers. It's also adjustable here, so you can adjust the length. And of course, the angle using the quick release levers. Fantastic. Now that's the Street Machine GTE. Yep. And uh, roughly, what does that retail at? Well, the a starting. Street Machine and the, Green, and, the, and the Grasshopper both start at about 2,200. Okay. And if you need to know any more, if anybody needs to know any more on specification, um, they can just go over to the Bike Fix uh, website for more info, and there'll be a link in the description of the video for that. The Grasshopper, the seat is actually a little bit lower and the pedals are a little bit higher. And because it's got the 20 inch back wheel it's a bit more compact but the riding position is definitely a little bit more a little bit more oh. laid back oh yeah you can see my posture obviously the seat is also adjustable but it's determined mainly by the height of the pedals in relation to the seat so with 
what position would be more comfortable on a longer jaunt would you say the street machine is set slightly more upright actually it, for me I like to be quite flat on my back yeah. and the reason is that if you've got more weight on your back you've got less weight on your backside right I so which is and, and as you use this is your pedaling muscles being quite uh, reclined just makes it a bit easier over the longer distance. Uh, are they both tourers or could be used for touring? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just all rounders. E either one would be fantastic for very long, very long distance touring. Brilliant. Or just Sunday riding or whatever yeah. you want to do. And what do we have gear-wise? This one's got. Uh, this one's completely out of date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's now on the on the reduced shelf. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it could be. Yeah, yes. Yeah, get in touch. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So that's the Grasshopper and the uh, Street Machine GTE. Yeah. Um, I think they've both got three times eight gearing. Well, you, you, they've, you've, you've got a hub. The, the specification, uh, you've got similar levels of specification on each bike. So you, you They're both en entry level? This, this, this is an entry level one, yeah. You can go for something with... Just, just, this has got the, uh, the it's a combination gear and derailleur yeah you can have normal derailleur gears you can have the hub. roll off hub yeah you can have a pinion if you like okay the grasshopper fx the fx means it's got this folding joint in the middle just here but as you can see the whole bike's quite a lot more compact because it's only got the 20 inch back wheel which means that it tucks in it up under the seat makes the whole thing a bit shorter. It also means that when you fold it up, it's it's not a small package, but it's small enough to get. Do they both fold? The street machine doesn't fold. Okay, so just this, just yeah. the grasshopper. So if I just take the seat off, you can see. You can see this hinge here, which is oh, yes. quite simple but very secure. Brilliant. Just give it, oh, give it a whack, and the whole thing folds in half. Oh wow, that's really straightforward, so, isn't so, it? Yeah, and it's good enough to get it in the back of a hatchback, or uh, yeah, that's all you need. Yeah, you can even twist the handlebars, I suppose. Yeah, the handlebars come out. Okay, but, yeah, it's very straightforward. most comfortable bikes I've ever ridden. Very comfortable. Um, I've never much been a fan of the under seat steering but uh, yeah it's really nice. Rides really well. Suspension is awesome. I haven't tried the grasshopper yet. So it'd be nice to try that eventually and just to compare the two. But at the moment, I'm quite impressed by this. That's it. Um, I've just got off the Street Machine GTE. Oh, it was lovely. I, you know, I was having a... I was imagining doing a, a nice 100 mile ride on that, no problem. And I, I'm sure I'd still feel... I'd still be in pretty good shape because the seat is phenomenal. Uh, first impression sitting on the grasshopper I feel like I feel a lot lower like I'm sitting a lot lower 
Um, I think at the moment I prefer the seat on the Street Machine GTE. But I, this has so many adjustments that you can do to it. I'm sure I could get it exactly how I wanted it. with the smaller wheels this bike is super comfortable I thought it would feel a lot different and it does and it doesn't which is a nice surprise um, handling it feels uh, ever so slightly more responsive though the steering slightly more direct than the uh, street machine I don't know if that's due to the handlebars what do you reckon, Stuart? I think it's handlebars. about they're, they're more in line with the steering, so yeah, it, it feels it, a bit more pointy. Feels very, more direct. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, if I had to choose out of the two, I'd take one home today. I think I would go for this. Feels ever so slightly more uh, sporty than the street machine, but I think I would uh, go for the street machine because it's basically just a huge sun lounger <laughs> slap the factor 50 on and get going baby oh i'm loving this looks fun but oh. dangerous no no it's lovely yeah. yeah you'd have to try one out at the bike shop up there man i'll tell you something i haven't had this much fun on a bike for a long time oh, i'm gonna have to get myself another two-wheeler ding dong Who needs bells? Hell's bells. I know that intre in 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 intrepid explorer. Where's the pedals? <laughs> this is a Mike Mad Max Twos uh, bike from the Outback. So this is the third model in the range. This is the speed machine. So the main difference is you can see the seat's quite a bit lower and the pedals are a bit higher. Uh, which means that you've got a much more relaxed position. At the moment I've got it in a relatively low flat seating position because that's the way I like it. Uh, and when you've got it like that, it's a good idea to have a headrest because otherwise you're supporting your neck. But what you end up with is something that feels more sporty, it puts more uh, weight on your back and on your, and puts less on your backside. Uh, it also has the effect of making the whole bike a bit longer because you've got a because you've got a big back wheel and the seat is down, it pushes the wheel outwards a bit. So you end up with quite a long bike, but also quite a low one. So, but it's still a touring bike. It's still it's not a sporty bike. It's well, it's sporty, but it's you wouldn't win any races. You get a much more exciting ride. There's something else about it, which is these handlebars. Yeah. Uh, they don't pivot, so getting in and out is a bit of a bit of a palaver. I find the easiest way of doing it is to twist them. Oh, well, especially okay. getting out, getting in, holding the brakes on, and then just dropping down. Yeah. And then to get out. Getting out is more tricky, but well, holding the brakes again. Actually, the, the smart way to do it is when you come to a, a, a stop, you can just pull the brakes on. Use your momentum. And it'll, uh, yeah, your momentum, and you can just stand up. Okay. So it's not the most convenient system for like a round town bike. When you're on the open road, it doesn't matter because yeah. you're you're riding, and and then this position is very nice because you've got your shoulders relaxed, your elbows next to you, and the whole thing feels very natural and easy. And you have a nice, still have a nice field of view, and somewhere to hang your gadgets here. If you yeah, you've got to. a big old dashboard there. Haven't you? Exactly. Yeah. So this is the speed machine. The speed machine. And uh, oh, this one's got the new graphics on it. The, 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 the two other models have got the older style of graphics. So They're all coming with the new graphics. This nice laser etching on the boom. Yep, so you can get it just right. Yeah, and uh, the lovely little plaque. And it seems to have a little bit of pink in the, in the, in the color here, which looks yeah, rather lovely. nice. Uh, I like these, the red. Yeah. You've got a nice shop there under the seat, rock shop. 
and it looks like you have front suspension as well. Uh, this one has got yes. Yeah, this is a well. This is a, a major feature. You've got all the suspension inside here, which helps to reduce the height of it a little bit. But it's also just a very nice suspension system. And is that a new system they're using? Uh, it's the one that they adapted from another manufacturer a okay. few years ago. Um, so it's 26 inch rear, 20 inch yeah, front. Yeah. Fantastic. Let's go for a spin, see okay. what it's like. You're going to give it a ride, John? Yes, okay. most, most definitely. Oh, I like this one. The seating position is a lot more extreme than the uh, GT. Um, slightly less extreme, we're doing a right here. Yeah. Slightly less extreme than the mole wrap, but uh, a, lot more, a lot more manageable than the mole wrap. This you could actually use as a city commuter. It's, it's great. I quite I like them. I find this. Uh, I think the uh, the Scoopy GT feels slightly more comfortable than this. But this is the racer. You can tell it, it will have a really good turn of speed. Well, let's see, shall we? <laughs> I think if you wanted it as a town bike, you could have the other handlebars. Uh, under seat steering? No, no, the uh, U, the UE ones, if, like on the Grasshopper. Oh, yes. Oh, I prefer, that, I prefer these because the Grasshopper sometimes, uh, those handlebars will tuck in. I catch my leg on it when I'm turning. Oh, uh, well, you, you have to adjust, adjust it for you, but yeah. it just means that when you've got it around town, you've got something, you know, it's very easy to handle it, push it around. Yeah, this is nice, though. And, strikes me with this bike is the comfort with the suspension under the seat and the suspension under the front, uh, on the front wheel there. It's really comfortable. Three times eight on the gears here. Seamless gear change, really nice. Do a bit corner in that. I intend to do it. Can you fit panniers on here? Of course, big ones. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, it rolls really well. Lovely when you put the corner in. The handle is really big. You don't have to think too much of this one. It's not skittish at all. Really nice bike. Okay, so here we have the Mike Burroughs Mole Rat. It's basically a variation on a theme. So if you're familiar with uh, a few of Mike Burroughs' uh, recumbent bikes, the models he made. Um, he made the Rat Catcher, Wind Cheater, Rat Racer, which is very similar to this. Basically, the Mole Rat is a Rat Racer designed without the, the box on the back. That's it, basically. Pretty much a Rat Racer otherwise. A few years ago I did own a rat racer so I haven't ridden one for a while so this is filling me with dread the thought of actually riding this in traffic right now but I'm gonna give it a go and let you know how it goes okay so let's tuck my socks in and give it a whirl the thing to do with this bike is because the chain runs right next to the front wheel here so you don't, you can't really turn the hand of the front wheel much to get round corners. So the key is to take, if you're turning left, stay on the right hand side and attack the corner fast and just lean through it. It's all right when you've been doing it a while, but I haven't done it for maybe seven years. So this is going to be interesting. So we've got drum brakes all round. Just go over that. And it's got the single uh, mono fork on the front, which is carbon fiber, fat carbon blade. Um, Got drums front and back. Uh, it's an eight speed. That's it. Brakes uh, just on the front wheel, and this is the lever here, which operates actually front and back. So you've got brakes on the front wheel and the rear. Wish me luck. I'm not looking forward to this. <laughs> okay. Right, limited steering. Oh, it's very short. Good. Good <laughs> Alright, we're moving. Talk about low racer. Thanks, Mike Burrows. 
I know who to sue if it all goes wrong. Well, so are we doing a left here? Yep. Okay. Let's get round the corner without stopping. Where are we going? I'm going. shift. Well, this is totally different to the street machine and the grasshopper. Um, you can feel like a little bit of pressure on the pedals and we're starting to move. Oh, great. Shame it's a little bit short. That was interesting. <laughs> is, there, is there any adjustment in this? You can't actually... No, uh, you can slide the seat back in. Okay, cool. Well, that one, I was always on the edge of toppling off. <laughs> no, actually, I'd say that was the most fun out of all three. That one put a big smile on my face and I could have just continued all the way home. But um, this would be really good on an Ordax actually. Open roads, flying along, lovely. Round town, not so much but due to the uh, limited steering. But a very nice bike and handles really well. Especially just, you, basically you, just, you need to go fast to get around the corners. That's where the fun is. Um, how much is this? Uh, you can't buy it. Okay, it's a one-off, isn't it? It's a one-off, yeah. Made by the legendary Mike Burrows. And uh, it's basically, as I said earlier, I think it's a, a rat racer without the box. And is there anything else different to it? No. Okay, but yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, I think I uh, enjoyed this one a lot on a par with the uh, the street machine. This one has overtaken the Street Machine GT as Johnny's fave. Number one, Speed Machine. Number two, it's quite difficult actually. I'd, I'd, for, just for ease of use and, uh, and as a general all-rounder, I'd go for the Street Machine GT just ahead of the Mulrat. 
So it's a win-win for HP Velotechnic, I'm afraid. Velo ads, out. <laughs>